Hola, this is Yvette. Thanks for joining me for this watercolor painting tutorial. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to paint a watercolor ocean shoreline with footprints in the sand. This is a real-time step-by-step tutorial, so if you have any question, please feel free to leave a comment. These videos are possible because of my Patreon. Thank you. Grab your paint and let's dive in. Okay, also for this time, I'm going to be using a white mask. This is a drawing gum to uh, protect the area of the moon. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be drawing a horizon line. Then I'm going to find where I want to put my moon and I'm going to be using my white mask into the moon. Okay, so I have here my HB pencil I already traced my line and I am using watercolor arch gold press 300 grams paper that I totally recommend you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, I'm going to put it a little here. So this is going to be where my moon is going to be. Okay. And then I can even trace some part of the shore so that I will know where the water is going to stop and where the sand is going to start. So now cover the bristles with the foam of the soap before loading your brush with the product. And then I'm going to be moving a little bit my white mask. It's not good to shake it. It's better just to be doing it like that because you want to avoid the bubbles, okay? So now I'm going to use A little bit of the product and I'm going to go around the moon. This is a very nice big full moon. Okay. And then I just want to add same white mask in the line of the horizon line and by doing this I'm going to feel free to paint the background without thinking oh I make a mess okay so I'm going to wait this to get dry to start painting my background and remember to clean after you use your brush clean very well because the product is going to be damaged damage your uh, bristles i'm going to come back as soon as this is dry okay now that it's 100 percent dry i'm going to grab my number 12 round and i'm going to be using a clean water and i'm going to be wetting 
all my background where the sky is first. Be sure that your paper is 100% covered with water. And that's why we cover the moon because it's going to be easier for us to be painting the background like this. Okay. I am using the light of my lamps to be sure that everything is wet. And I'm going to start by applying a little bit of my Cerulean Blue with water. And I'm going to go around the moon, but I don't want to be touching the moon because I want the Cerulean Blue to go inside of this area to create this halo, okay? Then, we have a little Then I wanna grab a little bit of my ultramarine blue and I wanna go all around. And if you notice, I'm making these like strokes left to right. And in the pattern, I wanna be using the moon glow that it has a little touch of purple in the pattern where the horizon is and also in these corners this is a very nice color because it's not black and it can give you a very like re really nice effect of night and remember everything we're doing now, as soon as it's dry, the color is going to be like, you know, the same intense as what we're painting now, okay? So let me grab more of my ultramarine blue. Some more of the ultramarine blue. Okay, more intense. Going to clean my brush. Going to grab again more of the Cerulean Blue. Going around. Clean my brush. And again, I'm going to grab the Moon Glow. Uh, now I'm going to dry the picture and come back and decide if we want to keep adding more color. Okay, so now that it's 100% dry our work paper, we're ready to add our second layer. And for that, I want to be using our paints gray that I have here. So I'm going to be adding clean water to my paints gray to have it ready. And then I'm going to clean my brush because I want to wet again the whole thing. That's why it's very important that your paper is 100% dry and that you're using a good uh, watercolor paper because if not, you're going to be peeling the paint that is in the bottom of your page, okay? So now I'm going to grab my paint gray and I'm going to be starting adding some like strokes that it can be like, you know, clouds and the horizon. I want to have like darker in the top and the edges as well, something like this. Okay, when you feel it's ready, I 
want you to clean your brush and with the clean brush i want you to swap some of the color with a clean brush close to the moon something like this and some of these areas whatever you want to have more highlights I'm just cleaning this and now I'm going to be drawing my picture again okay it's dry and now it's time for us to peel the mask from the moon Going to start with it round number two so for that i want to work inside the moon to create this effect of the texture of the surface of the moon okay for that i'm going to uh, wet first my brush and i'm going to wet just inside the moon like clean water And I wanna grab first a little bit of my cerulean blue and I'm going to be adding a little bit of the paint gray to the cerulean blue. And for that, I'm going to start adding some dots. If you see, I'm not touching the edge of the moon in this part. I'm going to wet my brush and I wanna add some water here like this. Then I'm going to grab again the color and now I'm going to go and add this color in the right side edge. I'm going to clean my brush and with clean water just tap here. And I want to add more effect in this part like this. Okay. I'm going to dry it and come back with the effect of the clouds. Okay, now that it's dry, I want to grab my, again, my number six. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just a little bit tip with water the tip of the brush. I'm going to tip it. I'm going to take out like the excess and now I want to just move my brush like this. I want to drag the, the colors. You're going to be creating this effect. And it's better to start very like slow. The slower you can control better the effect of the fog and the clouds. Okay? And I think I like just like this. And then we're going to be adding some stars with the watch. Okay? So I'm going to leave alone this part and now I'm going to peel this part to start working the ocean okay so i'm going to go back with my number 12 i'm going to be sure that is clean and this is what i'm going to be doing first i'm going to grab my ceruvian blue and this time i want to be painting a dry paper with wet brush. So I'm loading my brush. And with the belly, I'm going to start my right, left side, doing these strokes. 
and then load my brush and then my right side and if you notice I am barely touching this middle part of the paper so by doing this you're going to be creating this ref uh, reflect this highlight okay so I'm going to dry it and come back okay now it's dry I can decide that how how much I want to be adding so I'm going to add a little bit of my ultramarine blue same way you can even dry more your brush and I start adding the effect you can even cross the lines this part the horizon one need to be with this color it's like a darker the ultramarine keep adding the belly building the reflection of the moon a little bit of water the edges I want to have the complete solid color but if you notice my color is diluted with water it's not a heavy color Here I can see my line, so you want to go around very careful. A little bit of water, just a little bit of water. And still working with the belly. Okay, it's time for me to dry my paper again. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to grab my cobalt green with a lot of water to make like a lighter green. And this time I want to go and add this green starting in this part and then go and add more like green to the top. So I'm going around, just looking for what is the shore and adding some green like this, okay? Now that it still is wet, I want you to grab a little bit of your raw sienna or your uh, yellow ochre with water. And I want you to add a little bit of this color in the top of the cobalt green, but more close to the shore. Something like this, okay? Here we can even clean your brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the cerulean blue again. And I wanna add a little bit of the cerulean blue in the top to give more color in this area. So we're going to have some areas with white of the paper and another area is more like the color of the ocean.
with the belly again, making this texture. My paper is starting like drying, so I can apply this blue perfectly because it's dried this bottom part. So I want to keep adding this texture. Okay, let me grab more water. You can go back and forth until you like what you see okay a little bit of the ultramarine dry in a piece of paper because I want to have more texture again Left to right, my strokes. And here I'm going to add again a little bit of the moon glow, moon glow that we used before. Cleaning the napkin, the excess. I want to clean the excess because I want to be able just to add some of this color like this and if you notice this color is more into the edge of my paper sure that is clean and I'm gonna grab I'm going to start first with the Serubian blue again and I want to create the same texture but this time the strokes are tiny tiny lines left to right we get more water to make this light color you can see how the strokes are tiny strokes to clean my brush and grab some of the ultramarine blue first and I'm going to be doing tiny strokes as well it's going to be helping you to see like the movement of the water
some areas we're going to see more darker colors than the other ones because of the waves but this color close to the shore this color need to be lighter to grab a little bit of the moon glow my paper is dry that's why I can make these little strokes and the paper is not like blending the colors because it's dry If you notice, I leave like a line, like lighter, this blue lighter, and then I start adding more color. That would help again for the horizon lines. Okay, so now I'm going to be joined to start working the sand. Okay, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to still use my 12 round and I'm going to wet all the area of the sand with clean water. I'm going to grab a little bit of my raw sienna and I want to go close to the shore but I'm not going to be touching it I'm going to, the watercolor is going to be the one that is going to move something like this and then again with the belly I'm going to be adding some color very soft and gentle like this okay I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of my raw sienna with the tip of my brush and I'm going to come close as much as I can to the line and as my my paper is still wet it's going to be like moving and spreading the color so I clean my brush and I'm going to with the belly I'm going to drag some of the color outside to my right side I'm going to grab more of the same color and in the bottom a little bit of water because we want to the effect of the sand again using just the belly my paper start like drying I'm barely touching the paper left to right just to create this effect of the sand more because I want to have more color in this part let me just grab more water and I'm going 
to grab a little bit of my darker brown and add a little bit of this color here at the bottom because I want when I peel the tape I want to have a very nice frame here so clean my brush just really busy some a little bit here and there nothing crazy okay so now, now I'm going to dry it to add the footprints okay this is dry and before adding the footprints I want to add a little bit more of the shadow of the shorts you know how the when the water came to the sand how the sand is wet so for that I want to go back to use my number two I'm going to grab clean water and I'm going to create the effect of the wet, you know, the wet sand. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of my burn amber with a little bit of the dark brown and I want to come close again And with the belly, I'm going to push the paint out. And I can see the mark of the water that I did, so I'm going to go and use that mark. Okay. So, now with my tinting brush, I want to go back to use my darker brown and I'm going to be adding this color just in the edge like this by doing this we're creating more the effect of the volume and if you see it's not a straight line I'm wiggling my brush The idea is to have a, the line with the colors, the green and the blue, and then a white line, and then this dark brown for the shadows. But if you lose the white line, we can go back and use it with um, our white wash, okay? So with the same brush, we're going to create the footprints. So the idea is that the people is walking that way right so we can even use a pencil my hp pencil to create the footprint so we're going to start adding one here and sometimes the print is not going to be like 100 percent visible because of the sand so we can see like partial.
Okay. I'm going to go back with my thin, thin brush. And I'm going to use my darker brown. Adding some water. And some water to my burnt amber as well. In my brush. I'm going to start with my burnt amber. And in some part, as I told you before, you don't need to complete all the footprint. of the dark brown this dark brown is going to be helping us to create again the volume that the sun is you know going down Then we're going to go and grab a little bit of our raw sienna or yellow ochre, whatever the color you have, with water. And what we're going to do, we're going to go around the footprints. to be super light and it's important to leave a uh, a light area around okay so now we're going to grab a uh, another piece of paper to cover the heaven, the sky, and the ocean. And I want you to grab first a little bit of the burnt umber with a lot of water. And we're going to do some splashes. The dark brown and again and some splashes okay then grab your little brown and if you were missing some areas just add some dots here and there cover the sand and the ocean and we're going to grab some of our white wash we're going to clean very very well our brush I want to add some water to the white wash and 
with a thin brush, you don't need to use a big brush because thinner the brush, smaller the brush, the stars are going to be smaller, okay? Make this soup. <laughs> and let's paint some stars. Okay, so we can release it and see if we need to just clean this part. And check if we want to add more clouds, more effect of the reflection of the moon. This is what the finished painting looks like. I hope I have inspired you to try to paint it. If you like it, would you like to give me a like and remember to subscribe to my channel and make a comment. This is a way you can help me to continue serving to the art community. Thank you.